and we're starting with the carnage in America. Newsbeat. Take that house! Take it down! Four people have died as Donald Trump supporters rioted in Washington. Stop shooting! They broke into the main government building last night. We love you. You're very special. He and his fans are angry that the U.S. has confirmed its new leaders. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will be the president and the vice president. So let's get into it then with the story of the night and what it all means. Here's Newsbeat's Callum Leslie. This all started at a rally Donald Trump had where his supporters were protesting against what they think is an election that's been stolen from them. There's no evidence at all that that's true. Violence happens like it happens. You know, we're just like here to defend ourselves. But President Trump seemed to encourage the mob. We're gonna walk down to the Capitol. They marched on the Capitol. It's the symbol of American democracy. It's like their version of the House of Commons green benches and then some. And it's been 200 years since anyone stormed it. That was way back when the US was fighting Britain. But as politicians inside were trying to confirm the results of the November election, armed rioters smashed their way into the building, fought with police and even got into the main chamber. Those politicians were bundled to safety and put on a lockdown. They were even told to get ready to use gas masks. At one point, a video from a reporter stuck inside showed security pointing their guns at the rioters as they tried to force their way in. A lot of the protesters, a lot of the, the mob had broken into the Senate chambers. We locked all the doors around us, trying to figure out an escape. Police battled to take back control and more officers were called in from other states as Joe Biden went on TV saying America's democracy was under threat and he made an appeal to Donald Trump. I call on President Trump to go on national television now and demand an end to this siege. But when a video from the president was posted online, there was still no criticism of the rioters. So go home. We love you. You're very special. That was deleted by Twitter and Donald Trump's account's been suspended by the site as well as on Facebook and YouTube, all over fears that his posts could encourage more violence. Eventually, police cleared the building and... The house will be in order. They tried to disrupt our democracy. They failed. Politicians came back to finish what they started. Finally, at about half eight this morning, that's the middle of the night in Washington. The votes for President of the United States are as follows. Joe Biden's election win was confirmed by the current Vice President, Mike Pence. Joseph R. Biden Jr. of the state of Delaware has received 306 votes. Donald J. Trump of the state of Florida has received 232 votes. Callum, you're still here because we heard from President Trump in the last couple of hours. There's a statement come out from him. Yeah, it's through one of his advisors, Twitter. Of course, his account's been suspended. Here's what he's saying. He still disagrees with the result. Remember, he's shown no evidence at all that anything's wrong. More than 60 court cases found nothing. But he does say there will be an orderly transition on the 20th of January when Joe Biden takes over. So, in other words, he's saying he knows he's going to leave his job in two weeks. Which is helpful because the rest of us have known that for a couple of months from when he lost the election but yeah that is what he's saying what happens before then though well he's still in the job for a fortnight and there are now some politicians from his own party who want to use a special power to force him from office saying he's not fit to be in charge it's never been done before but it is a sign of how worried some are about his behavior and then what even if he does get to see out the last few days of his time in charge so there's a lot of talk about what he could face even from the police some are claiming he could be in trouble for inciting violence here's anthony scaramucci he worked for donald trump for a wee while at the white house you can't arrest the president that's one of the problems with that office you'd have to jail somebody like donald trump and i know that's breaking societal norms in the united states but he has broken those norms and then callum there's reaction around the world lots of criticism from leaders here in the UK. The Prime Minister Boris Johnson said what happened were disgraceful scenes. While countries like China and Russia, they aren't so friendly with the US. What could it mean there? 
Well, back to Anthony Scaramucci. Even if he is sort of joking here, he thinks they'll be laughing at America and Donald Trump. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt that he may not be a Russian operative. But if he wasn't Russian operative, this was a pitch perfect mission for him to create this type of havoc. He's either a useful idiot or he's a Russian operative. It's one of the two. Thanks to Callum Len. Let's find out what it was like watching all of this if you're actually in the States. Glenford and Jamie both live there. Shock. Um shock and disbelief but also like belief <laughs> you know it's like you know it's like you don't think it's gonna happen but then you're like okay yeah that makes sense one thing that i immediately notice is uh how far they were able to get without any intervention any stepping in and this was a perfect example of the police force showing strength and not just you know coming out guns blazing where you know a lot of times black people don't get that same courtesy, I should say. I, I don't know. And we've seen lots of, of those comparisons in the way that police have responded to the, to these riots at the Capitol compared to how they responded to Black Lives Matter protesters um, last year. Jamie, how does it feel where you live in America? Do you feel like you see this tension on a daily basis? On a daily basis, no. I mean, I am in sort of the New York general area. Um but I'm far enough out from the city that I personally don't see it. I think people are in general are on edge. I mean, I live in Baltimore. We where people, uh, black people, people of color, always have a state of tension between the police, um, police presence, and black people, the black community. It just seems, once again, I keep, you know, saying the same thing over again. But it just seems so strange that this was able to escalate in the way that it did. Do you guys worry that it's? got to this point and now where it goes next because obviously there's gonna there's this feelings of anger that have boiled to such a point for trump supporters who went to the capital but on the other side you know we've heard from both of you about how this is also going to anger the black lives matter movement because of the because of the disparity between how they're treated by police i guess I'm, i would like to be optimistic and i hope it doesn't escalate and I hope it doesn't get worse than what it is. I think it was more of an embarrassment to like, you know, our democracy as a whole. So as as young people in America, are you optimistic about your future now that we know that Joe Biden has officially been confirmed as president? He has control of the Senate. Um, so it's likely he's going to get to run the country in the way that he wants to. This is the year things change. Hopefully now things are, I guess, on the side of the, of the Democratic Party. Um, hopefully we can see some some good things happen. I agree. I mean, I think you know this is this is the best opportunity we've had in over a decade now to yeah. make some progressive changes happen. And so that you know that does inspire some optimism. I think. BBC Newsbeat. Back to the UK now and COVID. It's a pretty bleak picture. Yesterday it had the highest daily death toll since April. More than a thousand people died within 28 days of a positive test. And doctors and nurses are under huge pressure, as Newsbeat's Elna Roper explains. At this pace, I think we've got about a week. Dr Jim Down works at London's University College Hospital. Things are bad. We've got you know, plans that we can expand for another week at this rate, but we, after that we really need to sl- see it slow down. Or we're going to see um, the care we, we can deliver suffer, I think. The demands on NHS staff are enormous, and it doesn't just affect them, but their families too. In surge one, I sent my five and seven year old daughters uh, away because we weren't quite sure how we, how we would manage. Um, so I had my five year old in, in tears last night at the thought of another lockdown because she thought that meant I was sending her away again. That's Dr Alice Carter. Despite the impact on her own family, she's most worried about what this means for nurses. It's not uncommon at the moment that I've I come to work, I've walked into the unit to find nurses uh, crying. The, the physical and mental load is, is huge. And it's nurses like Ashley that Alice is talking about. Scared, sad, petrified, worried. With people asking for your help, you just don't know who to help first. The patients are losing their lives at a a dramatic speed. We're not just getting old people. This is young people that we're getting, people my age. On Ashley's point there, you might not think that you'll get COVID or that if you do, you'll be fine. But the pressure on hospitals means that if you get ill or hurt in another way, like if you're involved in a car accident, they might not be able to help with that either. 
This is the reality of the situation. And although these doctors and nurses are in London, it's reflected across the whole country. They can't do anything that will harm the baby, obviously, and they look after my baby so well. That is Rachel, who's due to give birth in a few weeks. She's obviously not old, and it's a point that NHS staff are keen to keep making. COVID is not just putting your grandparents in hospital. There are other people in intensive care too. All the time coming and checking, monitoring, you're looking after two people. They're saving lives. Now, that's obviously not an easy listen, but there are steps being taken to get us out of this pandemic. I told everybody, and I take injection, I feel better, I no problem. Shafiq Zaman is one of the first to get the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, which is now being rolled out to hundreds of GPs in England. Next week, seven major vaccination hubs across England will be up and running. So these include places like the XL Centre in London, Millennium Point in Birmingham and Derby Arena. The government wants to vaccinate 13 million people by the middle of February. So that will start with the priority groups like care home residents and those over 80. It's then hoped that when these groups have been protected, the government can look at moving us out of this national lockdown. Worth noting, though, that the lockdown is legally in place until the end of March, and with only just over a million people vaccinated so far. Critics of the government don't think this target is realistic at all unless things are stepped up dramatically. Newsbeat. BBC Newsbeat. A bit of music news to end with. Adele and Sam Smith have already had the honour. Now Parcelou has been named the BBC's Sound of 2021. It marks him out as someone to watch. Newsbeat's Kirsty Grant caught up with him. Yo, yo, family. It's Parcelou and I'm the winner of Sound of 21. 2021? 2021. They don't know about the block life. Still doing mother in the front line. Are you on Hi. the move? Where are you? In a car? Yeah, on the way to um, my management's office. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. So let's take it all the way back to the start of 2020 when you dropped Frontline. Still doing mother in the front line. But hey. Okay, this is how me. Uh, most, most of the time I get to what I'm doing, you know, like music. See you later. Thank you. It's been a pleasure speaking to you for real. And you. Mm. And just before we go, love it or hate it, it's back tonight. Clap for Carers has been rebranded. Clap for Heroes. It now covers homeschooling parents as well. If you want to let us know who you'll be cheering for or who your hero is, send us a WhatsApp voice memo on 07918 200 300 and we might use it later on. That's 07918 200 300. That's it from us for now. Tracy has your next update at 1.30. BBC Newsbeats.